I found a way to simplify picking out your weekly meals and I wrote a program for it. Hi guys, I'm the Hippie Hacker and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to write a Python program that will help pick your Pinterest recipes for your weekly meals. Don't you hate it when you need to cook a meal and you don't know what you want to eat and you end up spending so much time scrolling through Pinterest and wouldn't you want to have a way to have niche specific recipes at your fingertips? Today I'm going to be showing you how to do all of that so you can send it to Slack and have it ready for you on your phone. So let's get started. So how we would approach this if we weren't using software is we would search for a random recipe topic and then from there we would go to the creator's website to get the recipe. Our issue is that we will have trouble consistently searching for ingredients off various websites. Some sites may use the classic Cessor name, ingredients, recipe ingredients, or whatever the developer chooses to name the class. However, lucky for us, Pinterest will actually list the recipe ingredients on the pin itself. They only do this for rich pins whose links are rich in Pinterest identifiable data. In order to be a rich pin, Pinterest requires that you use keywords for your class names to help them identify what a given HTML tag is to be used for. So before we start writing our code, we need to come up with a blueprint to help us solve this problem. Our problem is that we want to get data from a list of random Pinterest pins for a given search topic. We want our data to include the pin URL so we can save it later if we like the recipe, the name of the meal so we have an idea what the recipe is, and we want the recipe ingredients to make it easier when we're shopping. So now let's start looking at the functions we need to write. Our first function is run. We won't be passing or returning any data in this function, but we will use this function to invoke our getters. Our second function is our get search parameters, which will return a list of search strings that we will be providing Pinterest. Our third function is the get pins, which takes a URL and a pic number, then returns a list of pins the length of our pic number. Lastly, we have the get recipe ingredients that takes in a URL and returns the ingredients, if any, from Pinterest. First, we start out by creating our Python file. I'm naming it scraper.py. Then I'm going ahead and writing the skeletons of our functions. Starting with the run function, we will first invoke our call to the get search parameters function. Inside, we will be importing the CSV library to read a CSV file that is containing our search parameters. We have to encode our strings for the URL, so we replace the spaces with %20. We can test our URL by printing it to the console. We then can copy and paste it to the browser to see if a valid web page loads. Now we're going to be passing that URL to our get pins function. So when I started writing this code, I tried using just beautiful soup to retrieve the backend HTML. However, Pinterest won't load any of the pins until the browser is done loading. So the workaround is to use Selenium's web driver to then access the loaded HTML and then parse it. Here we need to import the Selenium, beautiful soup, and random libraries. To find all the pins on the page, we need to find divs that have the class name of collection item. We 
we can test our code by printing the HTML of all the pins that we have found so far. Now we need to find our pin data. We know our link will be the anchor tag in the HTML, and we know the title will be the heading number three. But now we need to invoke our ingredients function to get our last piece. It's important to remember that not every pin is a rich pin, so we need to check if we found any ingredients. Since I'm sending this data to Slack, I will need to make sure that all the characters are in UTF-8. Now we can print our list of pin data to make sure we have successfully retrieved and cleaned it. For the chance we didn't find all of our recipes for a given topic, we need to remove the empty lists. And for the last part of this tutorial, if you want to learn how to send messages to Slack using Python, you can go ahead and head over to my Instagram where I have an IGTV showing you all the steps from creating the Slack channel to sending messages. So now that we're all done coding, we can test our program.
As you can see, we have the link to the pin, the name of the recipe, and all of the ingredients. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos of tech reviews or coding tutorials. And if you have any recommendations for something you'd like to see, leave a comment down below. And so this has been The Hippie Hacker and I will see you all next time. Bye!